All right, so welcome to your lecture 14 pre-lecture video. Um, so for lecture 14, you're going to be learning how to use statistics um, to take some experimental data and use it to decide whether two genes are linked together on the same chromosome or whether they're independently assorted. Now, before we start uh, lecture 14, though, um, I'm going to use this video to teach you how to use a very versatile statistical test called the chi-squared test. Um, now, I'm going to teach you how to use it using examples that have nothing to do with genetics at all, just very simple kind of um, hypotheses involving um, chance, um, just so you can understand how the test works in a variety of ways before we start using it for genetics. All right, so for the first hypothesis, uh, let's pretend that there's a new kind of casino gambling game sweeping the nation. It's really exciting. Um, where basically people bet on either heads or tails and somebody flips a coin, <laughs> all right? So if you bet on heads and it flips heads, then you win or whatever. All right, um, so as a statistician for the BC government, uh, your job is to figure out whether this game is uh, an honest game where the coin is actually kind of 50-50 and not rigged, uh, or whether there's something kind of casino doing something shady, whether it's rigged in some way and, and they'll win more often than they expect, all right? All right, so you go to the casino to gather some data and you watch the game happening for a while and you find that after 10 games, after 10 flips, uh, seven out of the 10 coin flips were actually tails and uh, three of them were heads. Right? So what you need to figure out from that data is, is this game honest or is it rigged? All right, so to answer this question, uh, we first have to set a hypothesis that we're going to test. So uh, let's hypothesize that the coin flip game is actually honest. Okay, so that's gonna be our base kind of null hypothesis. All right, so we'll put that up there. All right, so assuming the hypothesis one is actually true, that the coin flip game is actually honest, then we would actually expect to see kind of half heads, half tails. We should see five of them being tails, five of them being heads when we flip it 10 times, right? Now we saw seven and three, so how weird is that? How unusual is it for us to see seven tails and three heads uh, being flipped um, when we're expecting five out of five, all right? Uh, is it so unusual that we have to reject hypothesis one and basically conclude that the, the casino is cheating, it's cheating its customers? Or is seven out of three not that unusual when you're flipping a coin 10 times, all right? Well, that's pretty much what the chi-square test lets us determine. It lets us test how weird is this data compared to what we would expect, okay, if the hypothesis was true. All right, so um, the equation for the chi-square square test looks a little funny. So that says chi-square equals, squared equals the sum of O minus E squared, my, divided by E. I'll show you how to use it, it's pretty simple. All right? So O is basically the observed numbers, E is the expected numbers, based on our hypothesis being true, okay? So um, first step for evaluating this hypothesis is to calculate the chi-square value for each possible outcome of our experiment, um, and then adding those uh, chi-square values up to get the total chi-square value for the whole experiment. All right, so let's do that together. All right, so one possible outcome of this experiment is that the coin flips and it's a tails, okay? So what we would expect after 10 flips is that we would get five of them being tails. Okay, that's our expected number of tails is five, but what we actually observed was seven uh, tails instead, all right? So uh, we take those, that simple formula and just plug in all the numbers, right? And then just um, add it up. So five minus seven, um, gives us negative two, and when you square it, gives us four. So four divided by five gives us 0.8, right? So uh, outcome two, pretty much do the same thing. So the other, only other outcome is that when you flip the coin, it is heads. Um, again, we expect there to be five out of 10 being heads, but then we actually observe three. So we take the formula, plug in the numbers, right? Five minus three is two, squared is four again. So four divided by five is 0.8. All right, so for our whole experiment, the chi-square value in total would be just adding those two values up, so 0.8 and 0.8 from each one, and that gives us 1.6. Okay, so that's our final chi-square value. All right, so for those of you who like to understand kind of the logic behind these formulas, like, yeah, I'm not gonna test you on this directly, but you should kind of know why, what this value actually means. All right, so whenever you see a bigger chi-square value, what that tells you is that the observed values are deviating quite a lot from the expected values. Okay, so the more the observed value is far away from the expected values, the bigger the chi-square value is going to be. For example, let's say that we flipped the coin and eight of them were tails instead of seven. All right, so we're one step further away from what's expected. Right, so when we take the formula and plug in the values, right, five minus eight is three, three squared is nine, and uh, divide it, we get 1.8. Right, so notice just taking one step further away from what's expected, suddenly we more than doubled our chi-square value. Okay, so the bigger the chi-square value, the more the further we are from what we expect. Okay, so the weirder it is. All right. Also notice, look. So why are we squaring things and dividing things? So 
uh, we take O minus E, and sometimes that gives you as a, as a negative value as it did right here, right? 5 minus 7 gives us negative 2, right? So if we square it, it makes it positive 4, right? It makes it so that these values are always going to be positive, right? But then we also divide by E again um, in order to cancel out the squaring just so we don't end up, you know, um, increasing all of our numbers by one fold, right? Um, so that cancels out the squaring, and overall, like if we didn't do that, if we didn't um, use the squaring to cancel out the negatives, right, outcome one would give us a negative value and it would cancel out outcome two. Okay, so we always square just to make it positive. So the more deviations we get, the larger the value. Okay, so we can talk about the proofs later on if you like, just come by and talk to me. But going on with the steps then. So we calculated the chi-square value. So next we got to take that value, which was 1.6 for this one, and we need to use a table. Um, so uh, in your textbook is table 3-1. Uh, and we can use that table to convert that chi-square value into a probability, okay? A probability that the hypothesis is actually true, okay? That's what we call the p-value. The p-value is represents the probability that the hypothesis is true. All right, so in order to use this table, the first thing we have to do is figure out the degrees of freedom for our experiment. And to figure that out, all we have to do is take the number of possible outcomes in our experiment, so, and then subtract by one, okay? So in this coin flip experiment, there's only two possible outcomes, either heads or tails, so there's two of them minus one gives us one, all right? So we have one degree of freedom for our experiment, all right? So when we look at our table, right? It says degrees of freedom here, DF, right? So we're gonna use the one row then. It says it over on the right here as well, okay? All right, so our chi-square value is 1.6. So that goes right here in between 0.455 and 2.7, okay? So we're kind of looking, these are chi-square values here, and we're trying to see where does our value fit? It's somewhere in between here and here, all right? So when you look up at the top row, then it tells us, okay, when we're converting from one degree of freedom and we're converting from our chi-square value of 1.6 to the p-values above it, right? That tells us that our p-value is somewhere between this and this, between 0.1 and 0.5, all right? So p-value, as I said before, is the probability that the hypothesis is true. So that tells us that between 0.1 and 0.5 means that there's a 10 to 50% chance that the coin flip game is actually honest, that they're not cheating at all, okay? Um, so that means that there's a 10 to 50% chance that the hypothesis is true, it's actually a normal coin, it's 50-50, but the fact that it's actually, you know, seven and three is, is just random chance, okay? it's just a fluke. All right, so um, having calculated, have figured out the p-value using uh, table 3.1, the last thing we have to do is decide, okay, is this hypothesis supported or rejected then based on that p-value? All right, so to make that decision, we kind of need to set like a bar, okay? Set a threshold at which we would actually reject the hypothesis, right? So that threshold, like the maximum p-value that we can have to still reject the hypothesis, um, quite often we set it at 0.05, okay? So this maximum p-value, we call it alpha, okay? So alpha is the symbol that we use to represent the maximum p-value that we can use to reject the hypothesis, all right? So when alpha is equal to 0.05, all right, um, that means that the p-value from, from our experiment has to be 0.05 or smaller in order for us to reject the hypothesis, okay, before we can reject the hypothesis. Um, so notice that our value wasn't big enough, right? So our values are somewhere over here between 0.1 and 0.5. We needed it 0.05 or smaller, okay? So we couldn't reject the hypothesis. We actually needed a much bigger chi-squared value. 1.6 is too small. We needed something. Notice the chi-squared value, oh, sorry, the chi-squared values go bigger as we go to the right in order to make the p-value smaller. So we needed our data to be even weirder, even more different from expected in order to give us a bigger chi-square value so that we can say that this is weird, it's unlikely that the hypothesis is still true, all right? So to put it another way, right? So when the data is more different than we actually saw, if it was even more different than we expected, right? Then we could end up having a, um, a p-value that is 0.05 or smaller, and that would tell us that we have um, less than or equal to a 0.05 chance that the hypothesis is still true, all right? So if we ended up with a p-value somewhere over here, then we would be able to reject the hypothesis. And if we reject the hypothesis that the game is honest, right, then we can basically say with at least 95% confidence that um, they're actually cheating, okay? So since we can't reject the hypothesis, right, since we don't have enough evidence to be more than 95% sure that they are cheating, right, then all we can do is we say that, okay, the data at this point still supports our hypothesis, right? We can't reject it, so therefore the data supports our hypothesis that the game is still honest, okay? 
Um, now, there's other things to think about as well. For example, let's say that it's really expensive actually to investigate casino fraud, all right? If that's the case, then we might actually change our alpha. We might make it an even higher bar in order to reach it in order for us to decide that it's um, worth investigating, right? So you notice here that we went from needing 0.05 or smaller to reject the hypothesis. We might set it at instead 0.01, right? We need to be at least 99% sure, okay? So if we change the alpha to 0.01, then we're not going to accuse the casino of cheating unless we're at least 99% sure that the expected results that we observed, the unexpected results that we observed, the actual observed results, it's not just due to some random fluke, all right? So notice that we end up choosing a different alpha to match whatever situation we're in. Like for example, um, if you were investigating the toxicity of some new drug or some new vitamin that you're going to tell people to eat every day, right? You wouldn't just go with alpha equals 0.01. You would probably make the alpha something like 0.0000001, right? much, much, much smaller because if it was actually alpha equals 0.01, that basically means that you have a 1% chance that the person's going to die. Right, so that's not good enough if you're going to approve a drug for people to eat every day. All right, so in that case, you would make the alpha really, really, really small. So you need lots and lots of evidence to prove that it's actually safe. All right. Okay. So with three tails and uh, so seven tails and three heads with uh, with ten coin flips as your data, we didn't have enough evidence to reject the hypothesis. So so far, our data supports hypothesis one. But as we gather more data, though. Right? Let's say that we stayed there longer and got 100 coin flips um, recorded. Right? So out of that, let's say we still saw like 70 heads and 30 tails all right? um, out of 100 coin flips. Um, so at this point, I want you to just pause the video and take those two numbers, 70 and 30, right? and do a chi-square test and see what you come up with. Okay? So use table 341 and see what you conclude. All right? So you can pause it now. And I'm assuming you paused it and did all the work, so we'll continue now. All right, so first step again is calculate your chi-square value for each outcome and then total it up for the whole experiment. So for outcome one, the coin being tails, um, this time expected is 50, but observed is 70. So the numbers are bigger now. Um, so we take the formula, put in the numbers and notice that we're getting much bigger numbers now, right? 50 minus 70 gives us 20, 20 squared is 400, and then divide it by 50, which is expected to get us eight. Okay, much bigger number than before. It was 0.8 before, now it's eight. All right, for outcome two, um, Four heads, similar thing, take the numbers that we got, plug them into the formula, and get eight. Again, as our other chi-square value. So total chi-square value, add them up, we get 16, all right? So notice that whenever we do a chi-square value, whenever we're putting it into this formula, we're always putting the actual number of observed and expected numbers, right? So it's not, you know, 50%, 70%, it's 50 actual coin flips, 70 actual coin flips, okay? Because when we do that, um, we're not using just proportions or, or, or percents anymore. Um, we're telling the test how many total coin flips we observed, right? So the more we observe, the, the more confident we can be of the results if we take that into account. So don't use percentages, always use actual numbers. All right, so having calculated our uh, chi-square value, which is 16, we can now use table 3.1 to convert that to some sort of probability that the hypothesis is true. So basically find our p-value. All right, so our degree of freedom is one again, because again, two possible outcomes for a coin flip. Um, so with a chi-square of 16, right, notice we're way over on the right now, because this is a huge chi-square value, okay? So it's very, very unusual. Um, we're very sure of our results, right? So now the p-value is somewhere way off to the right, okay? it's way smaller, even smaller than 0 0.005, all right? So step three, what does that mean? How do we, what do we conclude at this point? Well, even if we met, set our alpha at 0.01, right, we're still going to be able to reject our hypothesis, right? Because there's a less than 0.5% chance that an honest coin flip game will actually give you 70 tails out of 100 coin flips, right? So when you have more data, seven, 70 out of 100 it is very unusual, all right? So now you're more than 99.5% sure that the, the casino is cheating, all right? So notice that the more data you have, right, the more convincing the evidence becomes. So that's why... Um, having more data is always better, all right? So how powerful the test is, how sensitive it is, right? Um, even if the ratio of heads to tails is still like 70%, right? That still gives you more power to, to sense what's going on, right? So that's more, why more data is better. All right, hypothesis two. So after, so let's say that you did all that work, they banned the coin flip game thanks to your work. Um, so a new, new game popped up, again, very exciting, very complex, where um, there's a six-sided die, 
uh, replace the coin. So you bet on one, two, three, four, five, or six, they roll the dice and you see who wins. Yeah, stupid. But anyways, all right. So our hypothesis is that the dice game is honest, right? That there's nothing rigged about that dice, okay? That die. All right, so let's say that these are your observed outcomes, okay? So outcome being that, okay, we roll the one, we saw that 25 times, we roll a two, we saw that two, 12 times and so forth. All right, so the question again is, is this game honest, okay? So we're gonna test hypothesis two. So again, pause the video, complete the chi-square test, do the math yourself, just so you can practice it and really get to know it, uh, and use this table to help you organize your data. Okay, so you can pause it now. And hopefully it did the work, and we're back. All right, so first we add up, um, so in order to find out what the expected numbers are, so hopefully you figured this out, you can add up the total number of observations, so that gives you 120 observations in total, and that you can use to help you calculate the number of expected outcomes for each one. Okay, so the number of expected views of each outcome, right? So uh, knowing that there's 120 um, dice rolls in total, right? Uh, if you divide it among the six possible outcomes, then you know that, okay, we should see, you know, 20 of each outcome if, if everything is fair, okay, if everything is balanced. Um, so notice observed and expected should always equal the same total number, okay, 120 for each one. All right, um, after that, you just complete the table. So just take observed and minus expected and just calculate each one of those values. Some of them are negative, some of them are positive. That's normal. Because when you add up those differences, you should always get zero. Okay, since observed and expected have the same total, when you subtract them, they should give you zero. All right, um, then you square those values to make them all positive, right? And then you divide it by E to make them back to a smaller number again. All right? And then finally, you add up all of those numbers to get your final chi-square value, which is 12.5. Okay, which seems pretty big, but remember we're, we're in a different situation now. Okay, so 12.5 is our chi-square value. All right, so next, uh, step two, we use table 3-1. Um, so degrees of freedom, remember it's the number of outcomes minus one. So with a six-sided die, right, we have six possible outcomes, minus one gives us five. So we're now looking at five degrees of freedom, so we're looking at this row at the bottom here instead. Okay. Um, so our chi-square value was 12.5, which goes somewhere in between this 11 and this 12 here. And, oh, you look 12.8 anyways. So that gives us, tells us that our p-value is somewhere in between 0.05 and 0.025, okay? So uh, if our alpha was 0.05, if we figured that, okay, that's, that's weird enough for us to investigate it, then we would reject hypothesis 2, conclude that the game is not honest, and, and go and accuse them of cheating. Right? But if it's really expensive and we decide, okay, we need more evidence, it has to be at least alpha equals 0.01, then we didn't quite get there. Right? Our chi-square value isn't quite big enough for us to conclude that um, this game is rigged. All right? So if it's, um, alpha is equals 0.01, then we would say that the data still supports hypothesis two. We still don't have enough data to reject it. All right? So that's pretty much it for now. Um, so as usual, please review this um, pre-lecture video until you understand it really well because we're going to put them to use in lecture uh, using your quicker questions. All right, thank you very much. I will see you in class soon.